exactly is an API anyway? You're typically going to see this abbreviated, but in case you were wondering, it stands for Application Programming Interface. And all this really is, is a way for applications to communicate with each other. They're going to communicate data and events. So one service can request data from another service, right? For example, your Bubble application can request uh, all of the customers that are in your Stripe account, for example or it can communicate events, okay? So when something happens, you can be notified about it, or you can make a request to trigger something to happen. So again, from your Bubble application, you can make a request to create a new Stripe subscription, or you can be notified whenever a credit card fails on a subscription, right? This communication of data and things happening on either end of the connection is really what the API is all about. It's to allow that line of communication to happen between the two sides. Now, there are varying levels of access and capabilities for an API. You may find APIs that are publicly available, anyone can really work with them, or they may be more protected. You may need to create an account with a third-party service and sometimes even pay to get access to the API. Some APIs are read-only, where it's really just acting as a data source, so you're just retrieving information. In other cases, there is more to do within the API where you can create resources, you can edit things, delete things. It really just depends on what the service offers. Now, in order to get started with finding the right API for your Bubble app, the very first thing you need to do is just to see what the options are. What is even available? So if you've identified a service or a platform that you're interested in connecting to, the first thing you want to do is go to their website. There is typically going to be a section for developer resources. You may see the labeling as API documentation or API reference or just developers. Usually this is found in the footer of the website. Some services may highlight their API more if they're more known for it. And so you may find it actually at the top of the screen on their first, you know, their home page. Um, but that's the first thing because that's going to give you the gateway for what kind of access is available, um, the pricing around all of this, and uh, what their API even is capable of doing. Some services that are really large and have many different products may offer multiple APIs, one for each of their products. You'll see this with Amazon, Google, QuickBooks, and, and other larger companies. In some cases, the API you might want to connect to is a simple tool. Right, So the, the tool itself is the API, and there's no other larger website or account that you need to create in order to get to it. Um, we're going to take a look at a few examples so I can show you what I mean here. But uh, yeah, there are some standalone services that all they do is offer an API and nothing more. What you want to make sure is that the type of API that is being offered is a REST API. This is uh, specifically for web-based applications. These are web-friendly uh, APIs. There are actually other types of APIs that are going to be much more code-based. So what you're looking for are REST APIs. And to be honest, these are the most common. After you've identified the documentation for the REST API within the service you want to connect to, the next thing you want to check are the authentication requirements. This could potentially be a major roadblock for you. If you can't get access to the API, then you, know, you just can't use it. So the authentication is the very next thing that you want to check. So when you get to the point of configuring this in your Bubble app, you're going to make a request for every single interaction, whether it's a request for data from the third-party service or a request to trigger an action, trigger an event of some sort. Typically, you need to authorize these requests. Um, there's a lot of APIs that are free and open, but most of the time you'll need to have some sort of um, really a password or an identifier so that that third party knows that you are allowed to make this request. API keys, access tokens, OAuth2, um, basic authentication, if you're given what's called a client ID or a secret, all of these things are compatible with Bubble's API connector tool, which is the plugin that you'll be using to configure all of your requests. 